Yo, what's up? I'm Jaded Nerd. If you have not heard, we have breaking news. Uh, Tasha K will get the exclusive interview with Kwame Brown, and a lot of people are talking. If you're not familiar, Kwame Brown played for the Washington Wizards and multiple teams, a 12 to 13 year career in the NBA, a former number one overall pick straight out of high school. He broke his silence a couple of weeks ago after Matt Barnes, Steven Jackson, and Gilbert Arenas decided to comment about him and him being a bust. Over the past couple of weeks, Kwame Brown has been killing it with great numbers, no less than 10 to 20, 30,000 people in his lives. The interview that he did with Judge Joe Brown has over 1 million views. There is controversy because Tommy Sotomayor is upset with Kwame Brown because he feels like he left him out of the loop on the Judge Joe Brown interview and they had a rapport and Kwame had interviewed Tommy and there was a lot of back history there. This news about Tasha K interviewing Kwame Brown gives me mixed feelings. I think I slightly understand because she is one of the largest creators. She's a black woman. She has a huge platform. Uh, there is another creator, uh, Lovely T, is another black woman with a huge platform. Both of these women, both of these channels, are approaching 1 million subscribers. Kwame Brown is over 200 and something thousand subscribers and is growing every day. Which leads me to ask a couple of questions. What could be the motivating factor? Some people are concerned that Tasha K may be a bit too, quote, messy to have a substantial interview. And other people feel like Lovely T would be a better option. Kwame Brown has been on record as saying that he's studied, he's watched, and he understands this YouTube from a certain perspective. I find it hard to believe that he may not have heard of Tasha K or Lovely T especially if he has been watching YouTube to study. It makes me ask another question because what if he's seeking a specific demographic? Kwame Brown talks about the go along to get along game and how we should not let the opinion and biases of other people be projected upon us. If we like or dislike a person, it should be on their merit or our personal interactions with that individual. Perhaps Kwame Brown feels like there is a demographic of people who watch Tasha K and he feels like his message needs to be sent in that direction. And if so, then I cannot speak on his creative vision. I will say that I will be in the bushes and I will be peeking and I will be seeing what is discussed and what is asked. I hope that many people get something out of this interview. Now we have to understand Kwame Brown doesn't mind us using the content and he doesn't mind people eating off his intellectual property, but make no mistake, Tasha K don't play that. And if you or I or anyone think that we're gonna get an opportunity to use this footage, you got another thought coming. You make it a couple of strikes along the way. Here's my final thought of this entire situation. I think that Kwame Brown strategically chose to go to another black creator with a large platform to continue to disseminate his message. He's dealing with some backlash from Tommy Sotomayor and his supporters, and I think he's handling it as well as he can. These types of things play out when you've got multiple people, ego, pride, money, and much larger things at stake. I can't say that Tasha K is the worst choice or the best choice but she may be the necessary choice to get the ball rolling. Maybe he's trying to get a catalyst, a spark. He may have a master plan. It could be more mama's cooking on the way. I'm dying to find out. But what do you think? Put everything in the comment section below. If you'd like to hear more content, please give a like on our video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to get the latest update. I'm Jaded Nerd. I'll talk to you all next time.